Do you have a 3D printer running Clipper? Have you backed up your printer's files and settings lately? If not, or you like to tinker with your printer's settings and configurations, then this video might help you out. Clipper, Fluid, Moonraker, and the rest of the Clipper ecosystem run on Linux, meaning your printer probably has a small Linux computer inside. Just like with your main computer or laptop, files can become corrupted, erased, accidentally changed, or even lost. Creating backups are critical to ensure you don't lose any settings or configurations, and to provide a recovery plan in the case of hardware failure. Also, having a backup makes it easier to go back and forth between different configurations and settings. While Clipper can run from an SD card based single board computer, or even a full desktop computer, today we're going to focus on printers using an eMMC or embedded multimedia card to store its files and settings. Similar to a general purpose computer's SSD, which you might be familiar with, eMMC chips use NAND flash to store data and can occasionally fail or be damaged. In this video, we're going to focus on 3D printers whose control board contains a removable chip. Specifically, we'll be backing up the data from an Elegoo Neptune 4 Max. Once the backup is made, we will copy it to a brand new chip so the original can be safely stored away. Unlike some other backup methods, the approach demonstrated in this video will create a 100% complete backup that can be safely restored to a replacement eMMC module if needed. The Elegoo Neptune 4 Max uses a rebranded MKS eMMC chip, but your printer might do something else. Directions in this video should still apply, however. You just might need to purchase a different module or adapter than the ones we are going to use today. In this video, we are going to use the following tools and supplies. One, a replacement eMMC module. This particular module is branded MKS eMMC version 1.0. You will only need this module if you want to follow the cloning portion of the directions. Two, an eMMC adapter. In this video, we will be using the MKS eMMC to USB adapter, but they also sell an eMCC to SD adapter. Either adapter should work the same for these directions. Three, optionally, you can print a cover for your adapter to reduce the chance you touch any sensitive components. The cover shown is by Cassadair, and one nice thing about this cover is that there's a version of the lid that prevents inserting the module into the USB adapter backwards. Four, a two millimeter hex wrench to take the bottom plate off the printer. Five, a Phillips screwdriver to remove the eMMC module from the printer control board. The exact hand tools required might change if you have a different printer. We will also be using the disk imaging tool, Win32 Disk Imager. Links to all these items and tools can be found in the video's description. We are now ready to start backing up and cloning our eMMC module. The first step is to install the USB adapter into the printed case. Make sure the printer is turned off and unplugged. Remove the LCD controller to ensure it doesn't get damaged. Also make sure there are no spools of filament on the holder. Remove the tool tray. Next, we need to lay the printer on its side. I like to use foam to keep the weight off the X gantry. Now, we need to remove the bottom cover. There are only two screw lengths, with the shorter screws being used in the middle and at the back. While removing the cover, you will need to disconnect the fan. Before you touch the eMMC module or the control board, make sure to ground yourself 
by touching a grounded piece of metal like the unpainted portion of a computer case or power strip. Now we can remove the EMMC, trying to only touch the sides of the module. The module is held in place with two tiny screws. When removing these screws, take great care to not apply too much pressure to the printer control board or it could be damaged. Let's plug the EMMC module into the adapter now to help prevent it from getting lost or damaged. Make sure to plug it into the adapter the correct way. Please note, other adapters and modules might use a different orientation, so check prior to performing this step. Now we can plug the adapter into our computer. Be careful to not touch the EMCC module while doing this to minimize the chance of damaging it. Do not worry if Windows displays an error message about an issue with the drive. This is expected since Windows is not able to read disks intended for Linux computers. Also, there are probably multiple partitions on the EMMC module and Windows will probably only detect one of them. So do not be concerned if the storage space is a lot smaller than expected. At this point, we can launch the Win32 disk imager. Next, we need to select the file name and location for the backup disk image. This can be anything that you want. While the correct drive will normally be selected automatically, for safety, verify that the drive letter is correct. We can now click read to start the backup process. Reading the EMMC will take about three to four minutes. Now that reading has completed, we can eject the drive and remove the adapter from the computer. Since we'll be touching the chip again, make sure to ground yourself. If you plan on cloning the EMMC module, place the original EMMC module in an anti-static bag and store it in a safe place. If you're not cloning the module, you can skip to step 25. Plug the new EMMC module into the adapter, ensuring it is in the correct orientation. Plug the adapter into the computer, making sure not to touch the EMMC module. Ensure the correct image file path and drive are still selected. Click right to start the cloning process. This step can take a few minutes. Eject and remove the adapter, making sure not to touch the EMMC module. Make sure to ground yourself again before touching the EMMC module or the printer control board. Carefully remove the EMMC module from the adapter and insert it in the printer control board. Install the two screws to firmly hold the EMMC in place. Take care to not apply too much force to the control board or it could be damaged. We can now reinstall the printer's bottom cover and reconnect the fan. When screwing in the screws, remember that the longer screws go on the outside and the smaller screws are from the middle and the back. I recommend keeping the screws fairly loose until they are all in the printer and only then tightening them all up. Carefully flip the printer back upright. Now we can reinstall the tool tray. 
Return the spool of filament to the holder. Reconnect the LCD controller. And we finish reassembling the printer by plugging it back in. At this point, we can turn the printer on and begin to test if it is working correctly. There you have it. We've successfully created a 100% complete backup of the printer's EMMC module, installed the clone module, and stored away the original for safekeeping. I hope you found this video helpful, but if you encountered any issues or problems while following the steps in this video, please let us know by leaving a message in the comments. Before you go, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video so you can be the first to learn about our future videos, printer modifications, and enhancements to Bed Leveler 5000. Thanks for watching.